I got a, a, a video uh, a message off. Let me just see if I can find this. Um, this from somebody who said I was talking about. This guy said, "Please, can you explain to me more the phrase you mentioned at the end of this video? Uh, Don't suffer fools gladly." In relation to alcohol. <laughs> uh, again, you know, I don't want to insult anyone, um, especially people that I used to know. And I don't, um, I'm not calling anyone a fool in this, but um, I'm calling myself a fool and the things that I used to do in my own life, quite foolish. Um, you know, th this is only from personal experience, as I said, but it's common sense and it tells me that you know my experiences that are not atypical they're not um you know they are they are typical experiences of what of what happens in most people's lives uh you know there there are going to be trade-offs in lives uh, and there's consequences and like i've said in a lot of these videos time is your biggest asset you cannot get any of this back uh, and when you break down the amount of time that you're spending you know you've got um, eight hours a night for sleep and eight hours a day for working and then divide the other third of your life up into whatever you know half for the stuff that you have to do and you're left with a few hours in the day to do the things that you want to do now there's ways of of increasing your quality of time uh, and increasing the amount of time that you've got to do the things that you really want to do in life but that's a different video um, but I'm saying that within that four hours you you just cannot afford to spend time with idiots um you know it's it's just one of those things in life you know i think it's um you, you're either in one state of mind or another you're um tired or you're not you're preoccupied you're worried or you're happy you're depressed um so different thoughts are going to give you different outcomes um, different people in life are going to give you different outcomes you know if you listen to people in your ear all the time certain types of people who are, are going to make you uh, depressed do you know i mean if you if you if you're in a depressed mood if you're thinking about your future in a certain perspective you can um your future will reflect the mood that you're in at that moment so if you're depressed you're going to think depressive thoughts about yourself in the future if you're happy you'll think happy thoughts and there's that's just the way it is if you're drugged up you're going to think along those wavelengths you know um you know alcohol is a is a depressant it lowers inhibitions it lowers mental capacity uh mental capability so you're you're not only able to less able to keep things in and and bring up thoughts cogent thoughts um, but the thoughts that you're bringing up are less able in themselves, right? Um, you've got alcohol creates a short-term confusion, but it eventually it creates a long-term confusion. Uh, you know, they talk about um, Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, where you start losing that short-term memory and the long-term memory, right? It starts affecting your brain on a very basic level. That doesn't just happen. This is a process and a progressive deterioration of the brain uh woolly thinking they used to call it in ireland where you, you're just walking around in a fucking daze all the time um and if you've got companions who are doing the same thing then they're feeding you that same thing you know you you when i used to drink um half the time i'd spend at home and half the time i'd spend um in pubs you know when I say half and half, it wasn't probably half and half. Most most of the time uh, I spent at home because I couldn't afford to go to the pubs in Ireland. Um, but when I was in the pubs, you'd hear the same platitudes, the same trivialities, the same old, same old, same old shite. Um, you know, putting the worlds to rights, we used to say, which was basically, um, you're thinking outward thinking. You're, you're focusing your mind on things that are outside of yourself things that you can do nothing about. Um, they sound really good uh, in the moment when you're drunk, when your brain is depressed, um, but there's no real basis for deep thinking or positive action or you know, getting yourself to any place fast, you know? Um, same, same old, same old talking points. And 
the thing about drinkers together is that nobody is going to rock the boat. Um, everyone is trying to maintain this certain kind of a compliance within the group. Uh, you're enabling each other. You're condoning the behaviours. You're giving permission to continue the behaviours that you're doing. Nobody wants to speak out of turn, right? You know, there's a certain balance and equilibrium that you need to maintain. Um, the outside world, outside the pub might be all fucked up, but in here, everything is designed to be undisturbed. And we do this in our homes as well, by the way, uh, for those who drink on their own. Um, you know, the, you set up your house to be that place of that safe haven. Um, not a safe haven where you lock the doors and stuff like that, that's a part of it. But a safe haven from the perspective of you, you're not having to listen to things that you don't want to listen to. Um, and even though alcohol creates a certain amount of volatility, um, you know, there's always a threat of, uh, of an upset, a disturbance, and it's there all the time when you're with other drinkers. So everyone's trying to, um, even subconsciously, trying to keep that down. Nobody wants a group of lads to break out into a fight in a pub because you know, there's going to be consequences to that, and you know that there's going to be consequences to that. So just think about all your rituals that you do either in the bars or at home. You know, think about your personal ritual surrounding alcohol. Um, think about alcohol as a as a tool that um, the tool that will dull the edges around your thinking. You know, follow the the logic, and soon you know that th those edges of what you're thinking about become blurred. Um, so, you know, when I'm talking about um, the alcohol dulls the brain it you know people drink because they want to uh push a, a certain bit of uh, certain feelings behind them you know it inhibits certain things and allows you to be more exuberant or whatever but it doesn't just inhibit the, the smart uh, or the the things that are annoying you it inhibits an awful lot more so um yeah that's where the term comes from like i said um I can't sit there with people who are drinking now because they just bore me to tears, you know. Um, uh, as soon as I hear somebody getting drunk now, I'm out the door. Um, you know, and that's, I'm not saying anything about them. Everyone can do their own thing, you know. It's your body, it's your life. Do what you want with it. But um, my time is clicking. My time is ticking away and I, I have to get on with the things that I'm doing myself. So I do not want to sit there and listen to another bullshit conversation. Um, from people that are not on that same wavelength there. So that's all that that is coming for.